Good Eve the fuck me. What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is. Brand new video for you guys today. Happy Monday. Hope you guys had a great weekend. So, I was requested to check out this video. It's called 10, oops, top 10 horror movie villains revealed. Now, I've seen a few, you know, actors, actresses without all the scary makeup on, you know, Jason, you know, what's his name? Kane Hodder, right? Um, I forgot his name, but the guy who played Michael Myers, Rob Zombie's version. Uh, I've seen the woman who plays Velik, the nun, from the Conjuring series. Uh, Judith something. Judith something. Judith Anna Robber, somebody who played, I forgot her last name, who played Mary Shaw from one of my favorites, Dead Silence. So yeah, let's see who's on this video. I already see the lady who plays the nun on the thumbnail, so yeah, that wasn't a surprise. But anyway, let's check it on out in about a three, two, one. Yeah. Time to take it off. Welcome to That's Watch not Mojo. What the fuck he looks today like. we're well, counting Jason down did. our picks for the top ten horror movie villains unmasked. Before we begin, that that we publish new content Maybe every back day. In the day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel now. and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the most dramatic and effective shifts in oh, appearance God. for actors and their respective horror movie villains. We're omitting Linda Blair's demon-possessed Reagan oh, reveal not from her. The Exorcist, since we also see her I still can't watch that movie. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Number 10, Bill Skarsgård, It. I know who he looks like. He's song. nice looking. Do you want it back? Just as Tim Curry traumatized a generation of kids in 1990 with his yes, turn as the horrific did. Both Pennywise the Dancing Clown, so too did Bill Skarsgård for the 2017 adaptation of Stephen King's classic story. Look at that. Skarsgård's handsome Scandinavian features are barely Woo! recognizable behind the creepy the clown makeup and jumped. costume. And the actor pulls oh! up the character with a malevolence largely about that missing part. from the 1990 version. If Curry's Pennywise was so more creepy. traditional oh in its God. good clown gone bad aesthetic, then Skarsgård takes the separation of actor from role even further by totally losing himself in Pennywise's over-the-top, soul-eating evil. <laughs> and I just started, you know, with a lot in the car. Driving through Hollywood in clown face, <laughs> laughing like a maniac. <laughs> Number nine, Davey Chase, The Ring. Yeah, wasn't that bad. One could argue that this American adaptation of a fan oh, God. Japanese horror film I forgot about that hasn't part. aged particularly Her well. Her nails! Still, what the young fuck? Devay Chase's portrayal of the vengeful ghost Samara remains one of the most iconic horror images of the early 2000s. The scene where Samara emerges from the TV screen and her cursed videotape was parodied Disgusting to death at the time. Girl. Yet Chase sells it with remarkable poise and genuine chills. Did he really just fall wet, on that With thing? a menacing crawl and effective makeup, it is a complete 180 visual. Well, thank God she doesn't look like the damn grudge. Look, which thankfully does not involve murdering people with a VHS chain letter. Come on, let me see what you got. What you got? That's all. I'm whooping the ass, Cindy. <laughs> Number That's eight, what made it funny. Tom Fitzpatrick, <laughs> the Insidious franchise. The Insidious franchise seen that is first. known for its eye-catching visuals. Oh Lord, the bridal lady. Both she scared the hell out of me too. Hand with mm, two of mm, the series' mm. lead villains. For starters, oh, Insidious especially him. composer oh Joseph Bashara is the man responsible the damn for demon, playing the series' iconic lipstick face demon. While Tom Fitzpatrick took over the role of Parker Crane, also known as the Bride in Black, for the franchise's second and third installments. Fitzpatrick is barely recognizable underneath an elaborately laced gown. I thought gown that was veil, a woman. Oh his my face god! Is similarly decked out in an impressive, creepy makeup job. That's no still wonder his ass is so chills. damn big. Pause. Number seven, Doug Bradley, the Hellraiser franchise. Nobody escapes us. Speaking of horror franchises, the Hellraiser. Oh, he looks like Pinhead, but just you know, like a cool, calm, worse, not right so scary version. Day. It's the franchise's lead Cenobite, like somebody cool Pinhead, played something. by Doug Bradley, that serves it's as its saying. most recognizable character. The esteemed British thespian portrayed the stately yep, S&M demon for a total too, of back eight day. films before departing in 2011. Bradley always seemed to approach Pinhead with a seriousness and respect that elevated the character above other, more basic or animalistic villains. There's an intelligence there matched only by Pinhead's oh penchant God. for pain and bloodletting. Which, while Bradley's striking face and booming authoritative voice, make him the one and only pinhead for his legions of fans. We'll tear your soul apart. Number six, Robert Englund, the Nightmare on Elm Street. My man. Come 
to Freddy. Doug Bradley isn't the only horror actor closely associated with He still with looks role. good, Robert Englund. For fans of the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, there's only one man who can portray the dream demon child murderer. You got that Cooper, right. Robert Can't nobody Engel. play him like the Robert Englund. The Californian actually boasts a large and varied resume to his credit, working in everything from comedy and drama to underground hits like Eaten Alive and Galaxy of Terror. Still, it's those horrible burn I scars, saw one striped scene sweater, and in that movie, Galaxy of Terror. Love that have Some of y'all might know what scene I'm talking faithful. about. It was very Often disturbing. Often overlooked is his compelling body language, which draws on influences How do you get from taken classic advantage westerns of by to portray a big Freddy alien almost bug like some sort of thing. I don't know what the fuck that was. Please, God. This is God. Number five, Nick Castle and Tony Moran, the Halloween franchise. Oh yeah, I've seen him too. Did he really look to be like honest, that? there isn't just one actor who can be considered the one and only Michael Myers. Yeah, John they have Carpenter's many. Carpenter's iconic boogeyman has been portrayed by I a think. number of people over the years, with no oh, less than right. five taking up the mantle in the first film alone. However, it's Nick Castle and Tony Moran who might be the most closely associated with the role, despite the latter's claim to fame only being the unmasking scene at the film's climax. Castle plays Myers throughout most of Halloween's runtime, shifting to production designer Tommy Lee Wallace, stuntman James Winburn, and mm. producer Deborah Hill for other shots. Nick would eventually return to the Myers mask in 2018, adopting the role for a brief cameo. I didn't know that! Number four, Gunnar Hansen, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Y'all running too slow. Face is another horror icon who's been portrayed by a number of actors over the years. But this time, there's only I one name that. we really need to discuss. Gunnar Hansen. This isn't taking anything away from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's solid first two sequels, but it's Hansen's body language that brings Leatherface to life in Toby Hooper's initial masterpiece. Oh. Hansen reportedly studied children at a hospital for the development yeah, you gonna of run the right when he right in order to girl, really. the role of an abused, chainsaw, and hammer-wielding I'm going to go back and watch the old ones because Hansen may have come across as menacing on screen, I started seeing the, the ones like from in those the who 2000s, knew with him is Texas, that Chains, was one of Texas the nicest, Chainsaw Massacre, most genuine 2006. guys around. Number three, Bonnie Ahrens, The Nun. Mm -hmm. She's not a bad looking lady. Today's mm -hmm. horror movie trailers generally aren't cut from the same sort of she got all that shit on, I'm gonna leave her alone. The 70s and 80s. That said, it can be difficult for a trailer to generate the sort of buzz earned by The Nun in 2018, which was thanks largely to the work of Bonnie Ahrens as the titular character. This offshoot from the Conjuring universe featured Ahrens in some striking and memorable makeup, while her oh performance God. in the role felt believable oh, that enough part to earn creepy. praise uh -uh. even from diehard uh -uh. fans of uh -uh. the franchise. Uh -uh. And this wasn't the first time Ahrens had given her all for a role, as she delivered a similarly menacing performance in the non-horror film Mulholland Drive as a frightening back-alley bum. Oh. oh, Jesus. Number two, Balaji Badejo, gross. Alien. Holy Dallas. shit. Many actors on this list are closely associated with the franchise and its cinematic legacy. That was not the case with Nigerian performer Balaji Badejo, who only had one screen. I didn't know the Black Day Alien was a that Negro. Of the titular xenomorph in Ridley Scott's Alien. Badejo was discovered in London by Scott's crew while studying there for a degree in graphic design, and was immediately cast in the role due to his towering 6 foot 10 inch frame. But Dejo's height was imperative for capturing the Xenomorph's menacing gait and stance, yet the actor never again returned to the role. Instead, oh. Badejo lived out his life back home running an art gallery, until he sadly succumbed to sickle cell anemia in 1992. Oh, Before wow. we unmask our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Oh, this motherfucker. Hated him. The makeup has gotten a lot better. Like I just did the third film this last year, oh, and okay. it was only about three hours, so it was like, it was a cakewalk. Hey, Kate, stand away! Run, I got so bad legs. Um, and then when they put the makeup on, I couldn't really hear, speak, or see. Anyway, Ooh. um, I could see a tiny little bit, and I was just not watching it there. Of course. Oh, I thought he would he would have been number one, but okay. What happened to me was so horrible that it wouldn't even be allowed in a movie. Yep, yeah, that's Jason. Old school Jason. I talked to this reporter and she said, let's do a story about the local kid that's making his way in the stunt business. I know, but I'm sorry, you can't go outside. You know, you, you just... Brent! Hey, Brent, stop it! 
I was uh, running every day. I did all the stunt in the movie, so I was learning with the stunt guy, with the stunt crew all the day. What's your favorite scary movie? Did you guys see the new uh, Scream that came on this, last, this past week? R.I.P. Wes Craven. I thought it was pretty good. Even though it was just for only like three nights. Hello, Cindy. Number one, Doug Jones, Pan's Labyrinth. Directors often have a troop of actors around them with whom they collaborate on many projects. Doug Jones certainly seems to fit into that category Yuck. when it comes to the filmography of Guillermo del Toro, serving as something of a good luck charm for the acclaimed director. Jones has provided his talent for physical acting and transformations in films such as Hellboy and The Shape of Water, but it was his performance as both they was the say, uh, and so, Kill Man in Pan's Labyrinth Shape of Water. that earned him the most critical acclaim. Illuminati it's confirmed. It's incredible how much Jones brings to these characters with his body language and graceful movements, saying as much okay, I'm with a getting itchy with this character other here. actors could deliver in an entire Ew. monologue. Este es el libro de las encrucijadas. Do you agree with our picks? Check out- That was a pretty good list. Like I said, I've seen uh, Bonnie, I think that's her name was, AKA Bellic, The Nun, uh, Kane Hodder, um, Robert England, Brad Dorr, even though he wasn't in this at all, because he was playing the voice of a doll, but you know, still he was in the movie though. Brad Dorff, Chucky, hello. Um, and whoever else that was on here, I, I remember from Oh, yeah, um, Bill. Pennywise, you know, yada, yada. But uh, this is a pretty cool video. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Comment below some of your favorite horror movie actors, whether they had a mask on or not. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and throw him in there. Uh, even though he didn't have a mask on, per se. Um, Tony Todd, right? Incredible guy. Incredible, oh my God. I think he's going to also be in Jordan Peele's... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Candyman, when they, you know, renew it and stuff. Now, I don't know about going to see it, because, like I said, well, if I didn't say it, the, when I saw the first Candyman back in the day, it scarred me for life. It was a horrible story. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell y'all about it real quick. So, first of all, my ass was 11 years old, right? I was at my aunt's house, you know. Um, well, she's not aunt by blood, but, you know, um... Her son and I, we were good friends and stuff at, at that time. And, uh, you know, we would go to school together and stuff. Uh, sometimes they would tease me and him about being boyfriend and girlfriend, all that yada crap stuff, whatever. Uh, but yeah, we were friends at the time. That's for another story. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. You know, we were, uh, I met his grandmother. His grandmother was very nice. Um, I, I, miss, I miss seeing her. Uh, his granddad was very nice as well. I always tell him, can he have one of my ponytails in my hair? Rest in peace to him. Uh, and, you know, other people in his family, they were very cool and stuff. So, yeah, you know, we were, it's like we grew up together pretty much. So, like I said, we went to school. Sometimes he went to his house. He, went, he, he came to my house sometime whatever way I was at her house during the summertime uh, he wasn't there at the time but his mom was and because uh, my mom at the time you know she didn't really want me staying at the house by myself I didn't want to stay at the house either we had a big ass basement we had an upstairs it would just be me myself and I and it would just be really eh, you know what I'm saying so uh, and then my dad would be working during the day so you know yeah so we, we, I went over there and at first I was watching Jurassic Park. I think it was the one, it was the one where they went to go rescue the boy. Now I don't know if that was two or three. Somebody let me know in the comment section. But anyway, um, I said before, when I, last time I went over there, I wanted to see the Candyman, but I didn't have enough time that time. By that time, right, my mom would came and pick me up, right? So I said, okay, I just watched enough time. So I said, something was telling me to just stay watching Jurassic Park, but I didn't want to listen. I asked my aunt, you know, can you, you know, put on Candyman? So she did. I regret it. What messed me up is the scene with the little boy when he went to the bathroom, you know, the sweets bathroom, if you remember that part. And he got hooked and shit. He was in a pool of blood. He was shivering, hollering for his mama. And they was holding her back from going in there because they didn't want her to get got by the Candyman. It was just very disturbing. And I'm not a boy. I don't have a a wanker, a shaboinka. And leave with your shaboink, boy. 
Yeah, it was just really, it was just really disturbing though. It was just like it was a kid in this bathroom, and he was just like in covered in blood, and he was gonna bleed the fuck out more than likely from his shaboinka. And I was like, ooh. Um, but yeah, it was just a horrible experience for me. I went to bed that night later on that night when I went home, and I woke up shivering because that movie, like I'm telling you, it did something to me, and I was like. I'm not messing with this no more. And I even say the last scene too had me disturbed when she went to go say that little baby old girl had and her hair got burnt the fuck out and stuff. She was a bald head. It was just real disturbing. You know what I mean? Come on now, don't judge me. I was 11 years old when I first saw this. I was like, man, I ain't watching this shit no more. But surprisingly, the, the second one and if the third one, if they made another one, uh, it's been a while since I've seen any of them anyway. It was very, it wasn't that bad to me. That's crazy. I don't know. Hey, like I said, but I seen all of them anyway at different times. Like I said, when I first saw the first Candyman, I was 11 years old. So bear with me on that. But anyway, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, once again, hit the like button. Comment below one of your favorite horror movie characters. Mask on or off, it don't matter. Um, and let me know if there's anything I can wrap for you guys next. Hit that subscribe button, follow my Instagram. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Taylor Rain, I'm out this day.